Thanks, Gary. You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. In this first segment of our program, Dave and I are discussing the topic of psychology and the church, a subject we have written about rather extensively, and we've also produced an hour-long DVD titled Psychology and the Church, Critical Questions, Crucial Answers. Furthermore, we're in the process of putting together a book that will be a collection of the many articles we've written dealing with psychology. The Lord willing, it will be off the press late this spring. David, I'd like to pick up where we left off last week, and for those who uh, didn't have a chance to see or hear our program, we're talking in general about psychology, and we identified that as psychological counseling or psychotherapy. Basically, the mode of psychotherapy is conversation. People talk, people listen, and they deal with issues Mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. So, Dave, uh, as we stated last week, uh, the evangelical church, I'm talking about the conservative, Bible-believing church, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is so heavily into Mm -hmm psychological counseling that it's it's really astonishing Mm -hmm. and the reason it's astonishing as we Mm -hmm. pointed out last week is that the concepts of psychotherapy that man is innately good that self is the solution to man's problems these are antithetical to what the bible teaches Mm -hmm. absolutely so why then do you think evangelicals have gotten into psychology Uh, tom um I'm sure there are a number of possible answers to that question, and this is my opinion, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that the uh, confidence in the Bible has been undermined uh, not just by psychology. That that sort of was the icing on the cake. This has been going on for a long time through uh, Darwin, uh, evolution, uh, through the influence of that in the public... Which is false science, by the way. Right. And that's an analogy that it has with uh, psychotherapy. Right. Uh, But that has... Well, uh, Tom, I'm supposed to give brief response now. This This is sort of an introduction. But if you went back to the early days of science, I mean when modern science was first developed, Mm -hmm. say, let's take Boyle's Law of Gases... uh, well, the man was an evangelical Christian. He even left um, in his will he, an endowment. It's at Oxford University today, lectures to refute atheism and the skeptics and so forth. He was opposed to Darwin. So we're almost, I could name them, but I'm not going to name them down from Newton and and on down the line. They all believed in God, okay? That's the way science began. Now, it's very interesting. I wish we had time, but we don't have time. But, Tom, it didn't begin in Islamic countries. They had some mathematics and, and, and astronomy, observations and so forth. But real science, uh, getting into the atom and the understanding of, of, of this whole thing, it began in Christian areas. Now, I'm not saying they were all Christians. Most of these, um, most of the founders of the scientific theories that we still go by today, uh, they were Christians. They certainly were theists. Uh, now, along came Darwin. Darwin's purpose was to destroy belief in God. That's the whole reason he came up with this idea. We've got to explain how man got here without God, okay? Freud, he came right along uh, on his coattails. And yes, this is the way, and now we'll explain human behavior uh, without God. So what happened? It permeated the schools. It's astonishing, Tom, because there is an innate belief in man that God exists. And I've done traveled quite a bit in the Soviet Union back in the Iron Curtain days Mm -hmm. for 70 years They tried to stamp out all belief in God. They couldn't do it. 70 years. Uh, And even today, in spite of the fact that atheism is dominant on radio, 
television, in our schools, medical schools, philosophy, science, and, and so forth, uh, still, when they take a poll, 92 to 95 percent of Americans still believe in God, okay? But anyway, what I'm trying to say is we've had an, an influence that has permeated society mm -hmm. from our schools, from grammar schools and, and TV shows and all the way that has undermined uh, confidence in the Bible mm -hmm. and belief in God. So now, when, uh, that doesn't work. I mean, furthermore, science has become a god that is worshipped. Why, you know, we, we blew it, uh, is what the Christians would say. We blew it when it came to evolution. We said, no, evolution wasn't biblical, but now the church is coming around. Catholic Church says it's biblical. Uh, for example, Baylor. Their science department says, evolution is established. We're going to stick with that. This is science. Okay, so what does the church need to build back its self-esteem? We need some scholars. We need to get science on our side. What do you know? Jesus was a scientist. Well, Mary Baker Eddy said so. First Church of Christ scientist. Wow. And, well, I... We can be scientific. We can get our PhDs because psychology is science. Tom, I'm a little bit older than you are, and I can tell you when I had to take my – well, they, you were forced to take an introductory uh, course in psychology. They called it mental hygiene mm -hmm. uh, in those days. I can tell you the atmosphere on the campus, we thought – Anybody who majored in psychology, I'm just talking about the average student, the psych professors, these guys are loonies. Uh, they got into this because they couldn't figure themselves out, and somehow they're trying. Tom, that was the beginning. Now, oh, wow, we're going to have a conference, and we're going to have a Christian psychologist address this. Today, Christian psychologists have become the big um, uh, authorities mm -hmm. on the Bible. Wait a minute. So uh, you asked me a question. Uh, I think part of it is the worship of science. Psychology claims to be a science. It is not. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been studies to that. We get back into that later. But the church, we can hold our heads up now in academia. We've got PhDs, and they, you know, the Bible is scientific, mm -hmm. after all. David, it's certainly a, a matter of pride. There isn't, there isn't any doubt about that. But it's also the flesh. Now, the world has been attracted to the idea that science is going to solve all of its problems, right? With, without God. Well, oh, of course. That's right. the idea. Right. Yet, uh, Christians, even evangelicals, they want their problems solved. And if they've bought the idea that science has some answers and that psychology or psychotherapy, psychological counseling is scientific, they're going to jump on that because they, like the world, want their problem solved. And they want to have science on their side, you right. see. Science. Oh, we worship science. You know, Tom, I'm a CPA, certified public accountant. I can remember as a young boy, uh, my parents, uh, he was a preacher, in fact, who was a CPA. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, wow, you look up to a CPA, oh my goodness, the guy never makes a mistake because he signs his name to examines the books of a bank and so forth. And wow, well, you get to be a CPA, you find out some of the guys barely pass the CPA exam. <laughs> and uh, they do make mistakes. Uh, sometimes they get sued for mistakes. It's the same thing with scientists. Scientists are little boys and girls who grew up. They went to university. They got degrees. They gathered a lot of information. For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 